go now. Huh. Get busy. All right, all right. Ooh, ah! I don't know if I'm more excited right now because I'm in my room and the door is locked. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't come in! Ah. <laughs> now! <laughs> Last week, my husband decided he was going to lay on the bed during the whole thing, and I'm like, yeah, I can't have you in here. This is not, this is, you, you do your own thing if you feel like, no. Anyways, um, all right, I'm excited. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. If you're joining, um, make sure you come in the comments. <laughs> and and say hello uh, so we can see you. I have uh, two special guests uh, today. And uh, just for those of you that are tuning in, the three of you so far, but more of you will be joining in <laughs> and, um, and watching later. Uh, my name is Lisa Gilbert, and I am uh, a mother of eight-year-old triplets, actually almost nine-year-old uh, triplets. And I am going to be 50, oh golly, Wait, do we, we have to say our age? No, what? I like to say my age. Look, let me just tell you what. I'm a proud mother, 53-year-old mother with eight-year-old triplets, and I'm surviving. <laughs> Barely, but I am surviving. I only had to choke out one kid. Not really choke out. But see, <laughs> I mean, like a, like a mental choke out, but not a real, real choke out. <laughs> one of my kids today. Okay, two of my kids today. Uh, let's just start off. I should probably be honest. Anyway, um, and I, uh, I got uh, got pregnant on my honeymoon and delivered triplets uh, early, so seven months uh, after saying I do. And uh, I was having this conversation with my husband today that we really didn't get to start in our marriage until our kids were probably five. And maybe even older than that. And and I want to talk to um, my guests about that today. But this is a conversation for whether you've got multiples or not. Uh, if you're a mom or a dad, come on in, join us. We love your comments and questions. If you are a triplet mom, we really have a lot of, um, we like your questions and we've got some knowledge. Uh, we've all been doing this uh, for a decent amount of time uh, to know what we're doing, kind of, sort of. Halfway, I can only speak for myself. Um, <laughs> but I, I want to introduce, um, and this is a no judgment, right? So it, it, I feel like a bad mom is um, a platform for moms and dads, certainly, to come in and say, I let my kids play video games for six hours today. Um, I had to do laundry and clean the house, and that was the only way I could do it. Um, and so there's that, right? Um, this is a place where there's no judgment. And <clears throat> I want you to feel free with saying, some days I feel like I'm, I don't know, I could maybe use some help. Um, and then if you're a parent that's like, man, this rocks, I love it. We're just going to make fun of you after it's all over. Um, <laughs> so um, with, um, without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Colleen and Kim. And <clears throat> Colleen and Kim are both triplet moms. Um, if you all tuned in, uh, not last week, but the week before, uh, Kim and I talked about how we met, uh, the crazy story of us meeting and then realizing that our husbands work together um, without knowing that, um, and uh, Kim teaching me how to shower, um, <laughs> person, don't freak out, uh, but how to shower in a way that, um, uh, you know, in a way that wasn't freaking me out because I, I was by myself and how was I supposed to bathe and shower when I have three uh, infants at home? And a lot of those things um, Kim helped me with. And and Colleen, we talked about Colleen because Colleen is, um, she's a superstar right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna let Colleen talk a little bit about her journey. Uh, and when you hear her journey and see how beautiful she looks, um, you're gonna wanna talk about her afterwards because- I'll see you later. <laughs> I'll see you later. Because <laughs> I don't care if you just spent five minutes doing that right before you got on. Girl, you still look good for as many as <laughs> you got. And she got like a couple litters. Um, so, uh, Mags, nice to see you, Mags. Uh, Zachary, no kids, that's why I like it. 
nice to each his own, right? It's all right. right. You want them, you don't. Then, uh, then that that's okay too. Um, we welcome everybody as long as you're not going to act crazy. And then, then I'm <laughs> find your address and suck you in the throat. Anyway, so uh, Colleen, <laughs> why don't you talk to us a little bit about uh, your journey to children? Mm. Well, that's a fun one. Um, my husband and I were married what? Four, five years when we decided that we wanted to start a family and then we realized quickly that we we're going to have trouble in that area and we needed help. So um, after several two, tubal pregnancies and miscarriages, um, we were told that we had to do infertility or fertility treatments. Um, but as you guys probably know it's extremely expensive. And so we weren't sure we we're gonna be able to take that route or not, but um, we have awesome friends and family who um, set up a fundraiser without us knowing so that we can do IVF, which was awesome. So we have one. I'm sorry, if I could just interrupt. How long did you try before you decided to go that route? It was four years, yeah, four years. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we were all, we were starting the adoption process through the county when we um, our family told us that they had raised money for us. So we had one shot one shot to do IVF, and um, so we decided to put two embryos in. And like you said last week, Kim, we had triplets were never even on a realm of thinking. Like that was like less than five percent chance. There was no way. And so a lot of our friends and family knew that we were going to do this or waiting for the phone call to see if we're pregnant or not. My husband wanted to record when we went to have our ultrasound. And I'm like, you're not recording me because I be bad news. I'm probably going to cry. And so he recorded the screen where to see if we had heartbeat or not. And the nurse was looking and then she's like, oh, yeah, I see a heartbeat or I see a baby. Actually, I see three. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> and she doesn't say anything. And my husband's like, no, really, you're kidding, right? And she's like, no, let's see if there's heartbeats. Like, we had bought a Nissan Murano, a family car. We thought, yeah, no, not not for triplets. <laughs> One little comfy car <laughs> in it. No, yeah, exactly. We're like, what are we going to do? But we like we're so excited everybody's waiting for us to call to say if we're pregnant with one or two and we sat in our car like we didn't even drive anywhere i don't even think <laughs> and we sat in the car calling everybody i'm like oh nope it's not twins and they're like oh that's okay one's good and we're like no it's triplets and i'm like what like we like shocked everybody we should have recorded those conversations because they're yeah. really hilarious yeah. yeah and um so yeah it was uh, journey and I loved being pregnant wasn't sick was great went in for a routine appointment we actually had just bought a house it was like two weeks three weeks before Christmas and I started packing and I knew I couldn't lift anything so I my friend was gonna come over that day after my appointment help me pack up some boxes go in for my routine appointment every two weeks and they're like you're not going home you know you're 24 weeks pregnant and 23 weeks six days they're like you're going to the hospital and pretty much if you have the babies today they probably won't survive and so i'm freaking out because i haven't packed anything i left my yeah. cereal bowl on the table and yep. everything so I'm coming back and so it's funny yeah. how that works we're, right we're, it's not that you're not concerned about the babies but the first thing in our mind is wait a second yes did somebody do the dishes? Right? Or no. Like, and then I had to have my whole family and friends pack up my entire house. You know how embarrassing that is? I mean, it's a huge blessing, but oh my goodness. I was so embarrassed and there's nothing I can do. Stick, stuck in the hospital. And I was in the hospital from that point on until I delivered at 34 yeah. weeks. So I left one house. And then when I was discharged from the hospital, I moved to another house. Wow, so, talk about added stress. Yeah, and then I'm looking around, I'm like, this is all my stuff, but I don't know where it is. Like looking in, it was just really weird. Uh, weird. And then you guys know, like you don't wanna be in the hospital, but it's where you're stuck. And then you have to leave the hospital without your babies. And did you have take home babies? Or no, yours were in the NICU, Lisa. Oh, you didn't either, Kim, right? 
No, the mine were no, in the yeah. NICU for two weeks. Yeah, mine were three weeks. So we got to bring Isaiah home on a Friday and we thought we had it all under control. It was so easy. And then they called us and said on Sunday that we were bringing the other two home. And that first night, it was pretty comical. Because <laughs> Micah and I like come from two different families. Like, you know, like he's like, everybody's like, yeah, we'll help you. And I'm like, yeah, but what are, I'm a mom. I'm going to do this. And so night one, all three of them are screaming. And it's like one o'clock in the morning and I'm ready to cry. We don't know what to do. And he's like, we've got to call for help. And I'm like, we are not calling for help on night one. We are not <laughs> white flag yet. We are not calling for help on night one. Not at one o'clock in the morning, you know. We oh can laugh God, it out. It. Yeah, it was funny. Well, Colleen, I talked last week about when they called and said Zoe was ready to come home, and uh, I'm like, okay, this is it. Like, you know, this is it. And then yeah. day two, they called and said it's time for Nathan to come home, and I'm like. Oh no, wait a minute. <laughs> you, you, what? So, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. uh, what? <laughs> and, then, and then day three, they said, okay, it's time for Elijah, and we didn't answer the phone. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> he doesn't quite understand that story yet, but at some point, I'm sure he's going to feel some kind of way about it. Yes. Uh, but it's, it's, it's no joke. Yeah. It's it, no it, joke. I can remember, man, those sleepless nights. And then we had a lot of family and friends that ended up helping a lot. Once I was like, okay, <laughs> we can't do this on our own. But um, but yeah, those not sleeping and just surviving. Like I can remember talking to Diane Anderson and her, she said, you know, you're, I don't remember the beginning stages. And I was like, oh, I'll remember, no. I'll remember no. all this stuff. And it's like, it's so true. You look back you know. and you're like, yes. Yeah. If I didn't write that down, I wouldn't have remembered. Yeah. All you can do is take pictures and maybe some video uh, because you, you, it's just, and I, I, I would assume that, you know, my friends that just have one kid uh, say the same thing, but I will say that it's when there's three, even if there's two of you, it, it's, I mean, from day to day, it's a blur. Yeah. I can remember we, our couch pulled out to a bed. So we slept because all three of ours came home on monitors, uh, uh, sleep apnea and heart monitors. And they oh, wow. sound like house alarms when they go off. And they're usually a false alarm. So we'd sleep on the couch because it was very close <laughs> to, get to the little bouncies they were in and check on them. But it was it was scary those first few times. Like, And then the monitor goes off and you don't know if they're breathing or if it's fake or, or, or uh, you know but like pulling the car over because we hear it. Like Lila had it on for what, six months? Her first six months of life. Wow. Um, it got to where we're like, oh, it's false alarm most of the time. But in the beginning, it was so scary, you know, wakes you up in the middle of the night, then it takes you forever to get back to sleep. But yeah, yeah. and then five years later, we decided to have more babies. <laughs> You're crazy, yeah, let's, girl. Let's talk, about, let's talk about that in a second. Misty says she can remember the first night home with the triplets so crazy, and she's a single mom, no help. Wow. Oh, wow. There you go. I remember when I was when I talked with Kim early on, um, before I had mine, and she would say, you know, her husband Tim would work during the day, and she was home with the triplets, and I thought, how are you doing this? Like, I can't even imagine... Look, my kids are almost nine, and I don't like to do it by myself. <laughs> like, it's dog outside. I like it when somebody else is here. I prefer right. the now if somebody else were here. Like it's, yeah, it's a yeah, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Yeah, so my husband. Have, so like, you, your kids are, um, your your triplets are how old now? Eight years old. Right, because they're the same age as ours. Yeah. I remember early on, your you and I went and had I'm a play date with our kids. Yeah, and I remember because we had lunch, uh -huh. and your kids ate each an entire peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which is which, <laughs> which is what they should have done. Yeah, and my boys, who still don't eat any more than they did back then, and now really? they were like three, maybe eat a quarter of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich if I'm lucky. No, and I just true. remember thinking, even now, even now, Colleen, I'm like. <sighs> That her eat, kids eat like two or three peanut butter and jelly sandwiches now. Like I can't get my kids to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, a whole one, to save my life. Like it's, 
I my just girls, I, was, I was floored by that. My girls eat like birds still, but my boys, both of them, they are like they eat everything. Isaiah will make his own sandwich and they say I'm hungry. I'm like, you just ate and go get a banana, go get something else. Thankfully, I only have two boys to eat me out of house and home. Yeah, my boys, in fact, we weighed them today and they are 50 pounds. Yeah. And I mean, the doctor's like, look, they're on the lowest, that's it. They're not, nobody's, we eat three meals and two snacks a day, tons of fruits and vegetables. Like we feed them just as much as we would. Uh, and they are, they just, they're the, they just are not yep. gaining anything. Uh, and then my Zozo, bless her little heart. Yeah, she is gaining. <laughs> <laughs> He's gaming. Um, so you've got eight-year-old triplets. Yeah. And at what age did you decide, you know, let's have some more? Yeah, like we're coming out of the fog and we're like, we can do this. Let's have one more because they're all going to – I talked to my husband too. I can remember. I'm like, they're all going to leave. They're going to go to kinder together and I'm going to be home by myself. And then they're going to all go to college. Like, let's just have one more. And then, yeah, well, we have five now. So we got two more. Because you had two more, but you had two more at the same time. Yes. Twins, yes. So yeah, and that was that pregnancy I got hospitalized for too. And then um, we actually moved into another house during that time, but thankfully I got to help and then got hospitalized for preterm labor for three weeks, got discharged for a week, and then got flu and pneumonia and got readmitted for another week. And then I think I was out for a couple weeks before delivering them full term though, 38 weeks. So I just remember, like, I'm pregnant again with triplets. And I'm like, wait, wait, is it, is it April 1st? Like what? <laughs> I remember telling Kim, I'm like, <laughs> it's like, what are the, you know, like I know we had help and I, we did put in two this time cause we had a miscarriage in between the triplets and the twins. But I'm like, what are the odds? Like, I have triplets. You're not going to have double, you know, you're not going to have triplets and twins. Right? Right. Oh, my goodness. And now we're very tired. Very tired. <laughs> so, uh, Jeanette, hello, Jeanette. Jeanette says her seven-year-old boys are garbage disposals. They eat everything all the time. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I just, I'd like just a little bit of my boys eating something other than two little tiny pieces of rice in five bites. Anyway. They're active too, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Are it's, it's, active. it's nonstop. And I think that's part of the problem is they just are nonstop. Their metabolism is, if I could sell it, oh girl, I'd be rich. Right. So, now you have, um, so now you have eight year olds and how old are your um, twins? Three. They just so turned three. And, three. and what, are, what is it? Uh, what are the genders? So I have two identical girls and a boy in the triplets and then a fraternal boy and girl in the twins. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm tired. Very tired. And you uh, are a stay-at-home mom and a school teacher. Well, shoot. Yeah, right? New job. <laughs> All of us. I don't know how I'm going to do it when school starts back out, starts back up because the twins don't just sit in front of the TV as easily as they did, you know, Yeah. six weeks ago. Now they're like, no, I'm not doing that. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can't even, I was trying to figure out today what I retired. And so there's, there's that piece of it for me yeah. that that is is definitely helpful. I don't have the how in the heck am I going to work full time, and then figure out how to yeah you know have my kids. Uh, Kim, I know that's where you're at now, where both you and uh, your husband Tim work full time, and then you've got your um, kids that just had a birthday, right? Yeah, twelve years old yesterday. I can't believe they're twelve. I that's know. I was. Yeah, and our Facebook memories are coming up, and the one photo of all of us at the beach. Oh, yes. Yeah. Four sets um, of triplets, right? Yes, all of ours. And then Angelina was also there as well. Oh, yeah. And we were That's all cool. like, yeah. and then all the parents are like, yeah. <laughs> we were all taking a selfie. I have no idea where the kids were at the time. Take care of each other. Right. I just remember that day and just looking at all the triplets. Like, yeah, 
depending on where you go. I mean, the bottom line is, is when you say triplets, people are like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like it's, yeah. and to me, even after all this time, it's a cool thing. I love it. In fact, I tell yeah. jokes about it on stage, right? But when you, when you go to an event, and I've only been to one, that was my only one for any, for whatever reason, and you watch everybody walk up with their triplets. Yeah. And you're just like, wow. wow. Right? It's really like, it's that's how people yeah. see when we're like, they're like, oh, twins? And I'm like, no, no, they're triplets. That's the girl. And then those are the two boys. Yeah. The boys are just identical. And people are like, whoa, yeah. that's, that's tiring. Yeah. That's mostly what I get, right? That must yeah. be yeah. tiring. Yeah. yeah, it is. Or which one? Yeah. Is the who's the worst? Why would you ask that? Who's the right? right? Question. You for asking that question. Like why? But yeah. when I saw all these triplets, you know, walk up, I was just like, I was floored. Mm -hmm. It's 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 pretty amazing. Yeah, it it's kind of cool. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it could be hard. I but. remember going to the zoo, and um, the triplets were like what, three or four months, and my cousins were in town, and so we were all going to the zoo, and my cousin happened to notice a few people looking at us, and they're like, wow, there's so many people looking at you. Let's count how many people look at you, and my husband's like, no, no, don't count how many people look at us. Count how many people <laughs> make comments, yes. and we stopped counting after 50 comments within, what, the first hour or so, and wow. it's just like, like we're not... You guys are here to see the animals. Our kids are animals. <laughs> you should have right. set up like a photo booth. Right? With the, <laughs> with the, triplet, the triplet stroller that just is, yeah. sticks out like a sore eye. Yeah. 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 The triplet jogger at the yeah. zoo was amazing. But, you know, we we had to get out. Like, yes. you, you had to get out of the house because oh it God. just drove you nuts. I remember when Tim and I would just put them in their triplet stroller you know, they were babies um, yeah. still, but we would just walk around Parkway Plaza in our triplet stroller because we had to get the frick out of the house. Like yeah. it was driving us insane oh being home yeah. with babies, you know, and the comments and the stairs. I mean, I wish I would have like <laughs> wrote a lot of things down because it's kind of funny um, thinking about it now, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I remember one time I was at Old Town and my parents were in town and they were taking a picture with the triplets in front of the fountain and this um asian family came over and they got in our photo and they were taking pictures with the triplets i'm like what the what is going on right now right i've gotten a lot of people that ask if they can take our picture the picture of the triplets like you know grandma's like oh okay, i want to show my husband which i'm fine but i've also got the people that are secretly taking pictures of you and they'll see their camera down it's like gosh like i'm not taking a picture of you uh so craig is asking all three of you have triplets yes, yes all three of us have triplets and in fact <laughs> Colleen has triplets and then went ahead after that and had herself some twins. Yeah, she's crazy. Yeah, yeah she's crazy. <laughs> she is absolutely crazy. Crazy and tired. Tired. Oh my gosh. I, let me tell you what. I, at, at least twice in the last two months, I was like, I think I have COVID. <laughs> and my husband's like, why? What's the matter? I'm like, I'm just fatigued. <laughs> I'm just fatigued. Isn't that a symptom? Look it up. Get on WebMD. I think I've got it. And I'm going to need to go to the hospital for 14 days. Quarantine with nobody else there. I think I've got it. My husband's like, no, you don't have corona. You have triplets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and it is not, I don't know how your guys is, how, how you, you guys' kids are, but I feel like when we go to the park and we really try to get out of the house, at least, uh, I mean, I'd say at least, five times a week maybe have one or two where we just run to the store or something but we try to get to the park to run as many days as we possibly can yeah and my feeling is is i want to just sit in my chair maybe answer a couple of emails while my children play in the park mm -hmm. i'm not saying i don't ever participate and time them with something that they're doing or running or 
say go, 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 yay, Nathan. But sometimes <laughs> I just want to sit in my chair and pop my head up every once in a while and be like, good job, kids. And then back to my emails, word with friends, right? It doesn't ever work. <laughs> Yesterday we went to the park and Zoe had a little friend go with her. So she was off doing her thing with her little friend. And we just go up go to a park where there's just tons of grass. So they just are running and playing whatever grassy stuff they can do, right? Whatever they can do in the grass. We got a football and a frisbee and a soccer ball. Just whatever you want to do with all the ball, just go. The boys decided that they were going to play soccer, but they wanted me to narrate. <laughs> <laughs> to narrate. The soccer game. <laughs> And there goes Nathan. He's got the ball. He's kicking that ball real hard. He's kicking that ball real hard. Elijah's got it. Elijah's coming out the back. Elijah's coming out the back. There he goes. No, Elijah misses. And now Nathan scores. Two to nothing. Two to nothing. I'm so tired. And then I had to do like like when they substituted somebody in. Okay, I'm not Nathan, Nathan anymore, Mom. Now I'm Chris. So Chris okay. is I'm like, well, I don't, is, who's in? Is Chris it's in or who? And then Elijah's got a substitute for Jacob. And so we got Chris and Jacob. I don't know those names. Those aren't my kids' names. I got to remember the name. <laughs> so on the days that we don't go to the park, it's just because I need to rest. Right? <laughs> like, why can't they just play with each other? I made three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Half a daycare. You got a whole thing here, Colleen. Like, Ooh. why can't they just? I've done that as a com uh, as a comment. You running a daycare? No, nope, they're all mine. <laughs> Come over sometime. It's not going to be quiet. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! It, it's it's. Uh... So one of the things that I've seen a lot, um, been paying a lot more closer attention to uh, the multiples um, group that that we have. Uh, I think the one that we're on all together. Yeah. And um, there is a lot of new moms. And um, I'm just wondering if we could give, like there's not much I think that we can do with regards to how do you deal with the fact that you carry these babies, you have them in a hospital, and then at some point you've got to leave the hospital without your babies. I, I, I don't know. I way home i don't know that i didn't cry i wouldn't say the entire time that they were there but yeah i i don't i feel bad because sometimes i feel like i don't i wish that i had the right words to say to the mothers that are dealing with this right now but i just don't except it's really hard it is but we're there for them um, yeah I wish we can all go out to dinner again since we haven't done that in a while. Cause I know that helped me in the beginning stages is to know yeah. that you guys yeah. were there, you've done it, you've survived or tips that helped you or funny stories. Yeah. Um, that definitely helped. Yeah. I think um, you definitely feel alone um, mm -hmm. because you feel like you're the only one that has triplets until mm -hmm you do meet other moms and um, we have so many from like pregnant moms and then newborns and mm -hmm. we have teenagers in our group. And so yeah. you have somebody there that's already gone through it, um, those stages, you know, and so that's what makes it so helpful and you don't feel crazy because mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of times I just felt crazy. Like, what am I doing? Like, this is like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you feel very inadequate because mm -hmm. I think you feel like if you're, if you ever imagine having kids, you imagine having one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you have three at once and they're your first batch, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't, you, you don't know how to split your time evenly. And I know for me, I felt really yeah. guilty. Mm -hmm. Um, and I still do. It's, it's yeah. crazy when you do take one away and you just have that one-on-one -on -one time, how much they talk to you and how different they are. Um, yeah. but you know, I think, um, the, your kids do know that you are doing the best you can. 
um, and that you love them. And, um, you know, they appreciate that. And I think it's okay to sit down with them and say, you know what, like mommy and daddy are tired. Um, and there's three of you, but gosh darn, we love you all so very much. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry that I don't spend enough time with you. If you know, pick a day, let me know. Like, yeah. you know, I, you know, that my kids are now 12. Um, like I'll have one, like she'll text me. We're in the same house, mind you. Um, but she'll text me. It'll be like 10 o'clock at night. And she's just like, you know, if, can you just check on me before I go to sleep? Cause sometimes I like to talk and I might have questions. And I was like, um, Whoa, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's just knowing that they each have feelings. They're very individual, but giving them that time, you know, it's, yeah. it's you, you do feel inadequate. And I think that's why this is such a great title. Like I feel like a bad mom because although we are all doing our very darn best, um, you do feel like you should be doing more. Yeah. And it's a lot. Even I set up, made sure that we had dinner all together tonight and, and um, picked a movie that was a good movie for the entire family and one that wasn't going to bore dad too much. And, um, and then sat and watched the first hour, right? So I could be in there with him. And then when it was time to go, you know, Zoe was like, mom, where are you going? I'm like I, I have my I have my my Facebook live tonight. I'm gonna go in and do that. You mean in your room with the door closed? Yes, sweetheart. I, I am. But I remember I've been with you all day. So I'm just taking an hour to, you know, and it just doesn't it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't matter. Uh, so Karen, hi Karen. Karen says being a uh, being part of the triplet group and meeting other triplet moms helps me so much. And uh, she says, I love listening to you all. Well, thank you for joining. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, um, I'll tell you, uh, there's nothing like it, but it is also, um, it's also very tricky. It's also very tricky. And I think, you know, for people that have more than one kid, like I have some friends that have three kids. Um, I will say, and not saying at all that it's any, that having triplets is any harder, except that it is. So I guess I am saying it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, having a kid and then having a second kid, you know, and then having a second kid. I used to, I used to think, I used to tell a joke on stage where, you know, with your first kid, you're like this helicopter mom. You know, yeah. your first kid swallows a battery and you're like, ah! You know, somebody call an ambulance. Like, this is horrible. This is horrible. And then, you know, your second kid swallows a battery and you're like, Okay, look, everybody, just chill out. It's gonna come out in his poop. It's it, everybody be okay. And by the third kid, you're like, what size was the battery? Because I think I might have needed that battery. <laughs> you just don't. You you really don't get that. You you don't. You one breaks an arm, and and we've all broken our arm. Like it's just there's no. There's no like trying on the first one. And then by the no. time you get to the third or the fourth one, you're like, you know what? You're two. I'm going to the store. I'll be back in a couple hours. The box of donuts is on the kitchen table. You can reach it. You know, to get up on the chair and reach it. You got your bottle. Shake it before you drink it. We're good. Bye. But you just don't have that with triplets. Yeah. It's yeah. now. Everything you're learning is now. And it's all three at a time. Yeah. You're outnumbered. I could remember when one of them would wake up in the middle of the night crying, they'd wake up the other two. And so we would take turns. Okay, I'll go try to calm this one down. You go try to calm those two down. And if we could just get one calmed in a sleep, then we can at least have one-on-one -on -one with the other two. I mean, it was it was rough. I'm saying like our, our triplets, I feel like we're a little bit afraid of running in the road and going by swimming pools. Cause I was a little bit like, I need to keep them all in one place. Keep your hand on the van. Do you know, yeah. I need you in one place. Cause if they all run three different ways, you got to figure out which one you're going to run after. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. with the twins, it's a different story. It's like, they think rules are made to be broken. <laughs> and I guess, cause they're the second child. They see that older you have your first three though, that if they did book in the different direction, then you could say, you know, I thought about um I thought about the leashes, you know, for a minute. I didn't drive, I didn't do it, but 
I was very close to, um, and I don't understand why people use them with just one child. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> they get too far, you trip them, and then they fall, and then you walk up to them and pick them up. It doesn't make any right. sense why you need one. You're one person, and sometimes you're two, and you need to leash your kid up. No, nah, I don't think. No. <laughs> if it's special needs and there's some, you know, some other issues, but but you got run out of the mill. Just kind of come on now. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think we trained our kids like I don't know. I we all held hands, and so if it was just me, yeah. like I held two, and the yeah. third triplet held another triplet's hand. Like we oh, always God. walked like in a line, or mm -hmm. you know, if Tim and I were together, it was like you have them, I have this one. Like we always communicated who had which kids. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, so that you You're knew constantly. Counting, counting, counting. Yeah. One, two, three, yeah. one, two, three, one, two, I'm three, counting four. to five now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I remember dressing the triplets the same um, when they were younger, and especially when they were toddlers. And people would say, you know, why do you dress them the same? I only have to memorize one color. You know, if we go to the zoo, <laughs> nice. it's one color. Yeah. I have to memorize, not three That's different true. outfits, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. Helps out. We took our kids to, when, when we take our kids to the park now, I mean, they're eight, so, and there's not many people there. We try to go at like seven in the morning. So, you know, hopefully nobody else is there but us. But it, it's, um, it's tough when you have, you bring three kids to the park and kids that are there just as a single kid with no siblings want to then play with your kids. We had a little, little three-year-old that followed my kids around the park the whole time yesterday. Yeah. Now I, I wanted to just pick her up and be like, who is this? <laughs> Look, I've got three. I don't have time to watch you swing on the swing, little girl. I don't yes. want to watch my own swing on the swing. You need to go find your dad or mom or aunt or I don't care who you take the park with. Go back to that. Here, here's a bag of chips. Take that back to your home. Like, go. Yeah. But it just, you know, they, they see you as this. Uh, one lady in the park, uh, I was running like red light, green light, and just kind of different things with the kids. And she said, "Hey, can my kids join?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, come on." And, you know, this was way this was before COVID, and now nobody wants to breathe on anybody. But I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, bring your kids." And she had three kids, and then I got six kids, and I'm like, "All right, let's play some red light, green light, and some, you know, some do some like X Games kind of Simon Says." And before you knew it, I had ten kids. Yes. <laughs> right. And, and the parents were just around the outside, just watching yeah. this daycare happen. Right. <laughs> and then afterwards, there were two parents, they came up to me, they're like, hey, could I have your number? And the next time you come to the park, do you think you could call us? No, hell no, I'm not gonna call you. I'll charge you, I can charge you if you'd like. Can I have your number? I, I, um, <laughs> I could remember, I never left, I still, still don't, but I would not leave the house without a whole bunch of snacks and a whole bunch of toys to entertain the kids because I'm always entertaining them in the middle of church or whatever. And I still do like other kids will come up. I'm like, here, you want a snack? Here's a snack, you know, <laughs> uh, but at, at five now bring on two more. Like after five, I can do a few more. It's fine. I, I think you're right. I think it's, it's definitely, um, like, I don't, I don't know. I had the car full of kids, like my three kids. And then, Three or four other kids. Everybody had a friend. And yeah. then one of the friends had to have a little sister come. And I'm like, all right. Somebody was like, what are you doing today? I don't know. I'm taking a van load of kids to the movies by yourself. And I'm like, yeah, you don't understand. It's much easier when my kids have somebody that they're interested in. I can corral. Like, I can corral them. Yep. Mm -hmm. And when they have somebody else to talk to other than me. It's much easier for me just to be in a constant one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, because nobody's talking to me. Mom, can you sit next to me? We want to talk about the movie. I want to talk about the movie. Can I share your popcorn? I'd like to share your popcorn. Maybe you and I can share the same soda. I want to sit right right by you. Do you think I can sit on your lap halfway through the movie, or do you think maybe maybe we could all sit on your lap, and then maybe... So you bring a friend. Yeah. If you mean you're going to talk to them and not me. No thing. <laughs> just say it. Uh, yeah. So Lana just joined us. Did I say it right? It's probably Lana. It's probably not Lana. Mm -hmm. Probably Lana. Lana, Lana, how old are your kids? I need to have her on next week. I think her kids are my my kids' age. 
Yeah, I want to say like seven, right, Kim? Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. should come on and tell us how old her kids are. Um, because I, I think, I think actually, uh, she was at the. I feel like she was at the the get together. Yeah, she was. Was she? Yeah. yeah so her kids are around our age, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, she's yeah. seven. Yeah, 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 seven. If I remember correctly, I remember her kid walk her kids walking up and me thinking. Man, those kids possibly might be cuter than mine. <laughs> and I was like, nah. <laughs> There's some cute kids. Yeah, so hers will be eight in September. Yeah, they're adorable. She has three boys. So cute. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I yeah, her kids are yeah, her kids are super cute. Yeah. Oh man. All right. So what are we um what are we doing about breastfeeding advice? Shoot. I could not really breastfeed the triplets because I had to supplement. I think you said that too, right, Kim? You had to supplement um, formula yeah, and, and for the calories. Yeah, it's supplement with the, what was it, Prio? No, yeah, Neo something Neo. like that. What was it? <laughs> I don't even remember. Oh my God, I, don't. I, I do remember. Oh my God, I could like the creamy formula for like yeah. a year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, and we like bought the creamy formula that came in the can. Yep. I feel like I could only find like one or two brand, like for whatever reason. And we had the, the ready made that was in the can. And golly, that stuff was expensive and went yeah. fast. Yeah. Yes. It was, oh, Neo Sure. Um, Neo Sure, yeah. Found, yeah. So, and you did. You had to buy enough for three babies. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. like, you don't get it until you put the numbers down, you know? Mm -hmm. Three babies, eight bottles a day, that's 24 feedings. Yeah. In one day. So and you feel yeah, like that's all you're doing thing. all day long. Yeah, that's that's all, all you're doing all day long. And, diapers, mm -hmm. and that's why it's such a blur. But yeah, we had a supplement, you know, breast milk and the formula. And after three months, I was I couldn't do it anymore. I was exhausted. Yeah. Um and like we were saying earlier, like you hear other moms that are so successful and are able to do it and that's yeah. great. Like, and it's okay. Like it's okay to, and it's okay not to, you know, yeah. and you, you can't have that guilt because you're surviving and yeah. you know, your right. kids are loved and they're fed. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, you do what you can. Yeah. I can remember, um, just going back and forth in to the NICU and bringing my milk that I pumped to give to the baby oh, or something yeah. there. Or even in the middle of the night when Micah went back to work and I would feed one baby, change their diaper, feed the next, and I'd count down, okay, only two more babies and then, you know, and then I'll pump and then I'll eat Oreos. And then, okay, only one more baby, you know, and you know, it's just like, just counting to get through the night and then fall asleep. Probably the fastest I've ever fallen asleep is when the triplets were babies and then get up and redo it again. Yeah. It's hard. It, there's not a lot of time. Uh, Jolene says, feed, feed, change, repeat. That's true. Yes. Melinda's are 16 months. Oh, gosh. 16 months. I, I, I was, Kim and I were talking about last time that there was, as difficult as the early days are, there's something about it that was a little easier in that um, when you could just have them um, not move, in a space that was closed off. Right, maybe they're not quite crawling, but they can scooch themselves from the belly to the tummy, and and are interested in all the stuff that you put in that play area. There was more time to get things done. I still felt like, you know, I changed diapers, fed babies, and you know, thank God that my kids were really great nappers. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's still the same way. But you do get a little bit of a break. And then it gets to the point where uh, your your gates um, are not high enough. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's your house, and you're like, okay, now I got to keep doors closed. I got to put those little things on the doors so that they can't get into doors. I got to try to put some gates up that are going to work. We had sometimes the double gates, <laughs> so they wouldn't climb the gates. I mean. Yeah. It's it's definitely um, it's tough. Hey, I can remember uh, you and your jammies you made for the. I know, and I meant those are the best thing ever. 
people. Next week I'll show people my, about. my my uh, my uh, my jail my prison PJs. Yeah, prison PJs. Uh huh. Prison PJs. Yep. We showed a triangle. I'll have to find that picture for next time. Yeah, I bet you it worked. It did. It sure worked. It it definitely worked. Yeah, that was crazy. In fact, <laughs> um, uh, speaking of pictures, I want to show. Let me see if I can do this. I want to show Colleen's little. So there they are. My crew. Your crew. Well, you're a lot of kids. Just like your little, your older girls. I know. There. And this was, this was probably a year ago. Yeah, I'm like, hey, Colleen, do you have any pictures of you and you by yourself? She's like, no. Do you have any pictures of just uh, you and the family? Ha, huh, let me dig something up. <laughs> <laughs> and then we showed uh, we showed Kim and her her uh, brood. I can't believe, I can't believe how big they are. I know. I remember my baby shower, and um, and there's mine, minor, you know. So cute. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but I remember my baby shower and uh Kim came and she had her she had her son with her. And I was thinking to myself, wow, how come she only has one? <laughs> how did she get away with just, you know, leaving the house with just one? And um and then when I talked to her about it later, she was like, Yeah, uh I can't leave the house. Uh, if I leave the house, he's got to leave the house with me. Do you remember that conversation, Kim? Yeah. At my baby shower? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Tim, you know, Tim, he was taking the kids to the store before I could even, like, like fathom taking them out by myself. But he wow. was like, I had to get out of the house. And he would put them all in the triplet stroller and go to the grocery store. You know, just for sanity's sake. And I know it sounds weird, but you do feel like insane, like inside. You know, it's like, but we need a different environment. And I was mm -hmm. just paranoid. Like, I was afraid to be by myself with all three. Like, I was yeah. just so afraid something was going to happen. <laughs> you know, and it's like, what do I do by myself? You know, and you just, I don't know. Like, eventually you you get the courage to do it. But I think that uh, by the time they were toddlers and I had a triplet jogger, I would load them up and we would go to the beach and I would walk, but I was packed with snacks and juice yep. cups. Like you are yep. packed and stacked. You are ready for anything, right? Yes, um, you have snacks, toys, tippy cups, everything. Yeah. Sorry, my husband saying my husband is saying the movie's over. What do we do now? I need direction. Put them to bed. They can't come brush your teeth because the door's locked. Just rinse their mouth. Put them to bed. That's what you should do, buddy. Yeah, I, I think um, too much. The, the trick uh, the trick is the the trick is in the snacks. Yeah. The trick is in the snacks. Even now. Yeah. It is. Even, Even now. now, I you know I say, do you guys have your water? Do you have a snack? Because I don't want to be out and then hear like, are we gonna get something to eat? Or I'm hungry or I'm thirsty. Oh, it's yeah. like even this day, you know, I I remind them, and Tim's like, stop for my like they should already know. You, you're right. <laughs> I, don't. I don't even have a and purse. I have a backpack so yeah, yeah. Backpack with all the snacks and everything. They're old enough to do it on their own too, but I still pack enough for everybody and everybody else's kids. Okay. It's a fine line, right? Because you wanna you wanna have them pack their snacks and get your water and get your stuff. The problem is, is if you get out of the house and they haven't gotten their things, then it just becomes annoying on you. Right? Yes. So it's a balance of teaching them to do what, you know, to be responsible and also kind of saving yourself from the aggravation, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, electronics and TV and tablets 
and video games and telephones. And where are you at with with uh, with how that works for your five? Well, um, they watch a lot of TV. And I remember in the beginning, I felt a very guilty about it. And another triplet mom said, you know, a lot of the programs now are very educational yeah. than when we were kids. And so that, especially now with, you know, doing some schooling at home, um, the twins are in front of the TV. That's the only way I can really keep them occupied. And then yeah. now, you know, all the triplets are on the computer more, but we do what we got to do, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're right. I mean, I, 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 frankly, I miss Blue's Clues. Right. I miss Bubble Guppies. Like, I remember when my kids got to a point where, you know, we weren't going to watch Blue's Clues or Bubble Guppies. And they, I remember the first time Nathan said, that's a baby show. And I was like, oh, what? Blue Clues? Are you kidding me? I mean, the, the, the songs are cheery and chipper. Like, why? I'm going to not watch Blue's Clues. Just one more episode. One episode of Blue's Clues, and then you can watch what you want. Like, right? But yeah. you're right. There's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more education in, in, in a lot of those shows now, uh, you know, than there were when we had Sesame Street. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Was Sesame Street? But yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's amazing. I mean, the kid, the triplets definitely want to watch older stuff now. And so we save those when the twins are napping. They can watch a movie that the twins can't watch, whatever. But at the same time, the twins probably watch things that I would have never let the triplets watch when they were that age because it is what it is. I have fun. Yeah. 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 And yours are older, Kim, so that they, they certainly are able to keep themselves a little more occupied, I would. Assume. They are, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just very thankful that, um, you know, they started sixth grade when all this hit. And so they had to finish their sixth grade year at home. Um, but I'm thankful that they were already given the tools enough through elementary school to kind of stay focused and really finish out the year. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be a challenge, I think, this upcoming year, uh, just to kind of get them all situated and making sure they have their own study space because um, I am working from home. So I'm not going to be able to help them. And so it's really just having that schedule and routine for them. Um, yeah. We got them cell phones last year for their 11th birthday because they were starting sixth grade and it was going to be the first time that they were walking to school and from a friend's house and back to a friend's house after school. And we wanted them to be able to communicate with us. That yeah. was our main goal. Um, it was the first time we weren't dropping them off and picking them up. So we really wanted that to, we, we needed that security yeah, um, definitely. for us. But you know, now that we're home, like this, especially this past couple weeks, I've actually had to limit their screen time. Um, I have to uh, put like limits on their apps when their phone turns off. And, you know, and when it turns on in the morning, because it's, it's becoming one of those things that they're, that's the first thing they're on, you know, they go to sleep with it and then they wake up and they go right to it. And it's just not healthy. Like I'm, because we're inside so much more now, thankfully mm -hmm. soccer practices started up and that my kids definitely need that physical activity again. But, um, I notice like, it's just not healthy. It's not healthy for me. It's things I do. I'm scrolling all night and then I wake up and I'm on my phone. It's like, it's mm -hmm. not healthy. And I started making small changes with me. And so I started making small changes with them as well. And so we're limiting that screen time. Um, in the morning, they have, uh, we've negotiated and worked out that as soon as they wake up, the first five minutes, they're going to meditate. Um, whether that's just breathing or just being quiet, um, yeah. they, can, they can pray during that time, whatever they want to do, but they're not going to get on their phone and start filling their head with that. Um, mm -hmm. We want it to fill it with something positive, like peace, and just be at peace, whether yeah. they're stretching or whatever. And then they ha all have journals, and they write five things that they're grateful for um, every morning. So five things they're grateful right. for, and just kind of start their morning out that way instead of going straight for the phone, you know, because I've <laughs> noticed it's something that they're just constantly on, you know, and and a part of me is like, I'm working, like, I can't help you 
and <laughs> they're on their phone and it's keeping them entertained. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's like, what do I do? It's, it's, it's very difficult. Um, I am grateful they're older though, you know, so I'm, I'm putting board games out I'm putting Uno out. I'm telling them go build a fort, you know, you know, I yeah. trust them to do those things um, mm -hmm. and to work together and, and to build things. And I have puzzles out. Um, so I am telling them between this time and this time you're doing this, pick one of these activities, do it solo or do it together. But yeah. it's, it's a new stage, right? 12 years old that I had, it's, you know, each stage has a struggle for sure. And yeah. um, this, yeah. this is one that we're in right now, the electronic stage, yeah. you know, what's healthy, what's not healthy. And yeah. then how do, how do we continue to work at home and entertain or, you know, keep their minds healthy too. So I think it's a definitely balance. Having a schedule, like somebody said to me, um, you know, somebody said to me to set a schedule and I was joking and I'm like, I have a schedule. You know, I wake up at seven and I cry and then, <laughs> and then I go back to sleep and I wake up at eight o'clock and then, and then I cry. And then uh, you know, like I, I have a schedule, but I, I will say, you know, jokes aside, like I definitely am trying myself to open up my Bible um, app and I have like a, a devotional that I do. It may be a week long devotion, right? It takes me 10 or 15 minutes, but so at least for me, my eyes are on that first. Right. That's good. I'm not going to be scrolling and looking and, you know, whatever. I, I'm a comedian. I've got my social media stuff that I, you know, need to keep up on. But at the same time, even with keeping up on all of that, there's the yuck that there's there, that's on Facebook as well and trying to debate this and debate that and wear a mask mm -hmm. and wear a mask and Trump no and Trump yes and just all these things, right? Um, but I'd like to, if I start my day the, w with what works with me, right. with people, I focus on God, then it helps me throughout the rest of my day. And then we have a schedule. So until about 10, 30 or 11, they can watch TV. They can play with their toys. They can do, I've got stuff on the table that they can do table stuff. And then we turn everything off for an hour. And then we do stuff on the table, whether that be games or just toys, but just no other noise in the house, but just our, our noise. And then yeah. we'll go outside or do something. But there's there's no electronics until they've done at least an hour of some kind of, excuse me, a half an hour of some kind of reading. I read okay. epic reading, something like that. So, And I wrote it on the board. And so we have no electronics until 12 o'clock. That's and good. That's not what our day is. But if we're home doing nothing, nobody's getting on. And I can tell you why that is because – what happens is, is then we get on electronics way too soon. Yeah. And I've lost that time. I need them to be on some electronics for some part of the time just so I can get a few other things done, return phone calls and make some, you know, I got a little part-time gig. And so I've got to, I've got to get ready for certain things. Maybe I've got a Zoom meeting. So if I started at 12 and they're on there for, you know, a couple, three hours, then I've got a block of time that's not right. Okay, you start at ten o'clock, and then by you know two or whatever, one o'clock, they're tired of video games, and then I'm I'm stuck because I've got a Zoom meeting or you know what I mean. Yeah. So I think definitely um, having a, a schedule um, and writing it on the board and and going over it and talking about it because my kids are eight, right? Yeah talking about it. It's, it's where the kitchen table is so we can see it. Hey, you know, we always got 10 books that she's read this week. And Nathan, you've got six. Nice job. And remember, you know, we've got this that needs to happen before 12 o'clock comes. If you want to play your video games, make sure you get your, your reading or your math work done. So I feel like that's really helped as well. Um, and kind of helping them get focused too, that they've got to get work done before playing just like I have to get work done before play and not a super strict schedule. Right. I feel like having a schedule also helps with the, um, I feel like when we're just don't do anything, then they're fighting a lot more yeah. or arguing yeah. or bored or whatever. And then my attitude also, I haven't really had a schedule since school ended 
Um, but I've noticed that there's a lot more fighting. So I need to like start more play dates or I need to get back on the schedule too because yeah. it helps with everybody. <laughs> Everybody's yeah, they need it. I mean, they yeah. they need they need that structure. You know, uh -huh. they feel more secure and supported in a structured environment. And so, mm -hmm. I think as long as they see it, they're good. If mm -hmm. they feel better about it, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. All right, ladies. Well, we have hit the um, we have hit the nine o'clock hour. Um, so I want to just tell you, ladies, thank you so much for being on. And Thank you. Your Thank you. Just it was fun. I'm hoping that some triplet moms on there or non-triplet moms, dads, parents, you know, maybe there's uh, something that we said that may be uh, helpful. And if it wasn't and you laughed, well, that's really part of my goal too. So um, thank you all for joining. And uh, tomorrow's Monday, really pretty much just the same as today. <laughs> Except Kim, you're working, so you do have to. Uh, I'm working, so you suck. Yeah. Have to, uh, yeah I, I do. I do. I do. Some days I'm like, should I retire? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Her five kids, and I'm like, suck it up, suck it up. She's got five. <laughs> oh. um, all right. Thank you, ladies, so Thank much. You. Yes. Uh, we Love you both. See you, uh, you next you. week. Uh, we're going to have one more week of talking about uh, triplet moms and uh, triplet living in life and the craziness of that. Uh, I'm going to try to have some um, parent coaches on uh, in the next uh, the next coming month and um, try to get a dad on here. Trying to get a yeah. dad. Need a couple <laughs> of dads. I had a dad once and everybody liked the dad, so we'll have some dads. Not not the dad of mine. <laughs> Wait. Probably won't get that crazy one on. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you all for joining and uh, have a great week. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. bye.